Well, hello, FFBC. This is Pastor Jim. I wanted to come to you today with an update, uh, both on church operations and on church ministries in the coming days. But I want to start with a, with a word of encouragement to you today. There's a text that's been sent around social media lately, and it's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It's a very famous text in the Old Testament, and I think it's appropriate for the times that we're living in right now. The context of this text is that both the dedication, the prayer and the dedication of the Old Testament temple. The temple had finally been completed, and Solomon had brought it to fruition by God's will and by God's power. Now God had fallen in power in his temple, and now literally the presence of God was dwelling with man on the earth. And so we come to verse 11 in 2 Chronicles 7, and this is what the text says. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. And so even in the midst of this high holy moment for the Jews in the Old Testament, God doesn't say that every moment in their history, in their future history at that point, was going to be rosy. In fact, he said that many negative things would happen and circum negative circumstances would happen in their world. But when those things did happen, if God's people would seek him, he would hear their voice, he would answer their prayer, he would forgive their sin, and he would heal their land. And so let us take a, a word of encouragement from those in the Old Testament and from God's response to Solomon here and to seek him humbly. Revival, spiritual awakening comes when we humble ourselves before the Lord. God hears our prayers, desires to move among his people and desires to heal our land. So let us continue to be a people of prayer during this season of this coronavirus a crisis in our world today. Continue to pray through the prayer guide that we sent out last week. Continue to pray for your neighbors. Continue to love them in the name of Jesus. Let me encourage you toward that end today. Let me update you on a few uh, church operations uh, and church ministry announcements today. First of all, as many of you know, uh, this is uh, being recorded on uh, on Thursday, uh, April 2nd, and yesterday the governor uh, announced that he would be signing an ordinance that uh, has a shelter-in-place order through April 14th. And so uh, that being the case, we as a pastoral staff and other church leadership have decided to go ahead and suspend any live events here at Fable First Baptist Church through the end of April, through April 30th. Uh, now, that with the caveat that if restrictions are taken off and the disease goes away and we're able to gather earlier, we will gather earlier. But we just feel at this point that for the month of April, we need to continue to meet with no live events. That said, the church office will be closed through April 14th at this point uh, through the ban that the governor has put in place. Uh, our staff will continue to work from home um, and remotely uh, and are still available to help meet needs. The stories that are coming out of what's going on in the life of the church are pretty amazing. I'll be sharing some of those this Sunday. But so you will know the church office will be closed through the 14th and all live church activities are, are canceled through uh, April 30th. So you'll know that. What about church ministries? Well, many of you know that our day to do the drive-through prayer at Piedmont uh, Fayette Hospital is supposed to be tomorrow on Friday. Uh, but with this ban being put in place, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. So here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you to continue to use tomorrow as a day of prayer for Piedmont Fayette Hospital, those who are in our healthcare industry there, and for the patients there at the hospital. Here's what I want you to do. I want us to almost mimic what the Jews used to do in the first century and before. They used to pray three times a day. So here's what I want to ask you as a congregation to do and us as a congregation to do, and that is to pray in the morning, pray at noon, and pray in the evening for our healthcare workers and for those who are patients at Piedmont Fayette Hospital. Do that tomorrow. Let that become a new way that you seek after God every day. 
Well, as you know, next week is Easter week. And though we are all lamenting that we won't be able to gather together as the body of Christ in person during Easter week, we've put some things in motion that hopefully will help us to engage with the truth that he is risen. He is risen indeed. The first thing is that I've recorded uh, six video devotions uh, that will be sent to you and will be available on our website starting this Sunday on Palm Sunday. Uh, I've simply walked through each day uh, of the Easter week and uh, talk about the events of that day, talk about what they mean from a theological perspective, and also what they mean for our lives today. So starting this Sunday, you'll get about a five to ten minute devotion uh, that I've filmed that will hopefully encourage you as you journey through Easter week. Uh, secondly, we will be having a Monday Thursday service that will be a live stream next Thursday, a week from today, at 6.30 p.m. We'll live stream that out to you. You can, uh, again, access it like you do a worship service on the website or through YouTube. Uh, one of the unique things we'll be doing that evening is we will be taking the Lord's Supper. Uh, I will be administering that through the live stream. And um, let me just encourage you to do this. Get some bread. Get some juice. Have that available for you and your family at your home. And when we get to the point of taking the Lord's Supper, you can participate in that as I administer that on that evening. I want to encourage you to join us for that Monday Thursday service as we remember that Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples as they moved toward Good Friday. I want to encourage you toward that end. Uh, Easter Sunday also. Easter Sunday service will be at 11 a.m. like the uh, our services have been. This will be a live stream as well on Sunday, April 12th. Now I want you to be looking for a special email coming from Pastor Ronnie in the coming days about how you and your family can actually participate in that Easter Sunday service. We're going to try to do something special that morning. You will need to do something in advance for us, but you be looking for that email that will be coming from Pastor Ronnie in the coming days about how you and your family can participate on Easter in the Easter Sunday service as well. Finally, uh, just so you'll know, uh, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Jack have been working hard to provide some online focus studies. Many of you know that our focus studies happen usually on Wednesday morning and Wednesday evenings. We've not been able to do that because of the crisis that's been going on, but we're going to start uh, next week to launch online focus studies. These are timed topical studies. Uh, Pastor Jack will be leading an adult one, Kirk Smith. Uh, who directs our men's ministry, will be leading a men's focus study, and Dana Pickford will be leading a women's focus study. Be looking for an email tomorrow on Friday from Pastor Aaron uh, that gives you the topics of those studies, the days that they're going to meet, and the times they're going to meet, and the links to be able to get you to those studies online. So I want to encourage you toward that as well as you continue to study God's Word with the body of Christ and grow in your understanding and your knowledge of Scripture. Well, I'm praying for you. I want you to know that. I love you very much. I miss you very much. Uh, it's been great to meet with some of you online over the last couple weeks and to be able to hear what God is doing in your life. Um, I pray that you and your family are well. And if there is a need, we want to continue to encourage you to tell us your needs. Go to info at FayettevilleFBC.org or call the main church number so that we can be able to help you in the best way that we can. We also want to encourage you to continue to love your neighbors. And if there are those around you who are in need, reach out to them through an email, through a phone call, and uh, see how you can help meet their needs in the coming days. We're going to get through this, folks. We're going to get through this, and we're going to be a witness for Jesus in the midst of it. May God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I do want to encourage you to, in your faithfulness to give. Ministry is still happening. And you can go online to FayettevilleFBC.org slash give to, uh, to see how you can give your regular tithes and any other offerings you may want to do that. Let me encourage you again to be faithful in that. We are going to get through this. God is faithful. He is present. He hears his people. And may he, in the end, receive all the glory for his body being faithful to him during this time. God bless you.